Okay, we're going to be looking at some initial parent graphs, and then we are going to go ahead and use Desmos to do some graphing. Um, so when we're looking here, we're going to go ahead and uh, put an S on each one that's a step function, put a C on each one that's a constant, put an A on each one that's an absolute value, and then put a P on the piecewise. Now, just so that you're aware, when you're dealing with a piecewise, you need to have more than one piece for it to work. Now, a step function looks like a series of steps. Now, a constant function means nothing ever changes. You always get out the exact same number. So you can see where this one is always the same height going across, so it is... Um, a constant function. Now, with absolute value, V is the letter of value. So your absolute value needs to look like, or your graph needs to look like a V. So you'd put an A here. So now, none of these others, as we look here, look like a V. So we don't have any others that are absolute value. Now, we also don't have any of the rest that are always at the same height. You might be looking at number four down there and say, well, it's at the same height for a period of time, but it's not always at the same height. So when you're looking at the step one here, it's got to look like a series of steps. Well, that would be this one here. Now, this one over here would also be a step function because you have a step here, a step here, and a step here. The steps aren't always the same, but they uh, are still a series of steps. Then we would then have our piecewise because we have one piece here, and then we have one piece here, two separate pieces. Down below on number five, we actually have five separate pieces. So, I mean, three separate pieces, so that's a piecewise. So now we're going to go ahead and graph some of these. When we're looking at this one here, our function says no matter what you put in, you only get out negative 4. So no matter what you put in, you're always at a height of negative 4. That's the only thing you can get out. So your domain is how far left and right it goes, which is all real numbers. Your range is how far up and down it goes. Well, it doesn't go up forever. doesn't go down forever. It's only at a height of negative 4. So you just go y is equal to negative 4. Now, on number 10, we're dealing with absolute value. So I'm going to go ahead and make a t-chart. And I'm going to try like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. If I plug in 3, the absolute value of 3 is 3. Plug in 2, the absolute value of 2 is 2. Plug in 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1. Plug in 0, the absolute value is 0. Plug in negative 1, your absolute value, that is 1. Plug in negative 2, that absolute value is 2. Plug in negative 3, that absolute value is 3. So if we plot those points, now remember it's absolute value. Um, and value begins with V, so you should get a V shape. And you can see, yes, we do get a V shape. So your domain is how far left and right it goes. Because we have these arrows, it goes to the right forever, goes to the left forever, so it's all real numbers. Now, it does start at a height of zero and go up forever, but it doesn't go down forever, so... It starts here and goes up forever, so your range is y is greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to use Desmos. So go to desmos.com, and then select the button that says Graphing Calculator. When you do that, you should see a button that says Graphing Calculator. Click on that. And you should get a screen that looks about like this. So now, we're going to be typing our functions in this box up over here to the left. And then when we type that in, it'll be displayed over here. 
So for this one, in that box on Desmos, we have these square brackets. That's referred to as your floor function. So you're going to, in that box, you need to go Y equals, and then you're going to type out the word floor, parentheses, and then what's in your square brackets over here, which is X, you're going to put inside your parentheses. So you type that in. Once again, you got to type out the word floor, type that in, and then you're going to hit enter. Okay, when you do that, <clears throat> you're going to get a graph that looks about like this. So just be aware of that. Now, your domain, you're asked to find. So we're going to say domain. Now, your graph does continue on in both directions. We only can see part of it. So it would eventually go to the right forever, so it's all real numbers. Your range... It does go up forever, does go down forever, but it has gaps. Here you're getting out a height of zero. Here you're getting out a height of one. Here you're getting out a height of two. Here you're getting out a height of three. Height of four. Height of five. Height of negative one. Height of negative two. Height of negative three height of negative four. Now, you only get out these. You'll notice that you don't get anything in here for a height between zero or two and one. So you're not getting out any decimals, not getting out any um, fractions. So we're only getting out these blue numbers that I put on the y-axis. And those numbers are referred to as just the integers. It's basically the positive and negative uh, normal counting numbers. So now, on the next one, oh, and some background information on the floor function. Pretty much anything that's on the inside here for your X, if it's a decimal, it rounds it down. So if you had 0.9, it's going to round it down to the nearest number, which is zero. If it's uh, 3.5, it's going to round it down to just a normal three. If it was, say, like a 5.7, it's going to round it down to just a normal four. That's what the floor function is about. So now go back to decimals and type this one in. Now when you type this one in, you should get a graph like this. I just did want to point out one thing. Now, for some of you, your window might be kind of really small where these numbers are really tiny and you're really zoomed in, or they might be really big. You can always hit this little home button over here, and it kind of takes you back to your basic window. Now, when we look at this problem here, here we're at a height of 3, here we're at a height of 0, here we're at a height of negative 3, here we're only at a height of 6. And that's because of this number in front. So our range, when we're looking at our heights, what we're getting out, we're really just getting out multiples of 3. And your domain for any floor function or greatest integer function that we're dealing with is always all real numbers. Now here we are dealing with what's referred to as a piecewise because we have really two different pieces. We have this piece and we have this piece. Now each line we need to type in differently into decimals. Now for this top line you need to go y equals, put down the curly brackets, curly brackets, and you're going to have a colon here. Now, what is bef after the if statement ends up going before the colon? What was before the if statement goes after the colon? And then you would need to go ahead and do the next one on your next y equals. And so you'd have to do, after you do 
that first line typing in just as you see it, you'd have to then go and hit enter and it should give you another line and you could type in y equals, put your colon in there. And then once again, what is after goes before the colon, and then what was before the if goes after the colon. And so that's the way you have to type it in on two separate lines with these curly brackets with the colon. If you don't have your notation like this correct, it won't work. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. And you should get a graph about like this. Now we need to find our domain and we need to find our range. Now on a piecewise, your domain always comes from what's after the if. And you'll notice we do have a blank spot in the middle where it's not connected. And so we know it's not all real numbers. So we're, our domain then, when we write this out, we got to just write it out as those two yellow highlighted sections. X is less than negative 1, X is greater than positive 1, and you need to join them with the word OR. Now, your range, on the other hand, you need to go ahead and look at your graph, and you look at how far up and down it goes. And you can see that, for the most part, we really start here at a height of 2, and then the blue goes up forever, which the height of the red over here is at a height of 3, which is still included in that ugly diarrhea color. So it starts out at a height of 3 or 2 and then goes up. Now, the thing that you need to be aware of here is Desmos doesn't always go ahead and give you the correct things for the end of your uh, graph. Now, just be aware that there's no equal to on this one. So we know at negative 1, it's an open circle. Also, there's no equal to here. It's not a greater than or equal to 1, so it's also an open circle. So when you write your range, it would only be y greater than 2 because it doesn't actually get to a height of 2 because it's not a greater than or equal to in your original problem. So now we're going to go ahead and graph these. So we need to type these into Desmos. Now, just another thing with Desmos, just know that if you go to the lower left corner of Desmos, you'll see this little uh, like keyboard here. If you click on that, it opens up this whole option here, which includes the greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. It includes square roots, your pi button. It includes a squared or an exponent. Also includes your absolute value. So yes, you can do your absolute value with this. So that's what I use to be able to type in the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to that shows up here. So now we need to go ahead and type all that in. Now, remember, you got to go ahead and use those curly brackets. And what's after the if goes before the colon. What's before the if goes after the colon. So type all these into decimals if you've not done so already. Now, just know that when you are typing in this negative one-half here, you can go negative one, hit the divide button on your keyboard, then two, and then you just have to arrow to the right to get away from that two on the bottom, and then you can put your X afterwards, and then just go plus one. So that's one way you can type that in. So when you go ahead and type this in, you should end up getting something that looks about like this. And then we have to find our domain and our range. Now, remember, I had said your domain on piecewise always comes from this stuff. Here you're dealing with everything to the left of negative 2. 
Here you're dealing with everything to the right of positive 2, and here you're dealing with everything in between 2 and negative 2. Well, all these highlighted numbers really cover the whole number line if you were to look at it. So your domain is once again all real numbers. Now, your range, you look at your graph. Now, you will notice that this bluish purple line starts at a height of 2 and goes down forever, which also includes everything that the black does for your height that also includes the red. So your range would be y would be less than 2. We now have to decide if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. And that's where Desmos doesn't do a good job of showing you. Now, when you are looking at this top blue one up here, we have an equal to on this one. Now, my colors up here don't match the colors down there. Oh, I see I messed up just a second here. So here's the correct graph. Because there's an equal to at that highlighted yellow negative 2, this would be a filled in, oh, sorry, a filled in circle here. Now the highlighted green goes to the purple down below. Notice that there's no equal to here in the highlighted green. So these would be open circles here which does continue down and go to like this. And then the highlighted blue, there is an equal to, so that would be a filled in circle. So when we look at this, we know that we don't include a height of two, it's an open circle, so we don't have to put an equal to there. So if you've not done so, go ahead and type in the last problem here of 35. Now, the colors I have indicated up here do match the colors on my graph below. Now, when you're looking at this top one up here, we need to go ahead and look at this inequality sign here. That's a less than or equal to, so that means at negative 3, that red one has to have a closed circle. Now, when we're looking at this blue one here, there's no equal to, so those inequalities are just less than, so there's no equal to, so these are open circles on the blue. And then when you look at the black, because we have a greater than or equal to, that means our graph at three would have a filled in circle. So now, once again, when you are looking at your domain, you need to go ahead and look at what's after the if. Now, the top highlighted yellow is everything less than or equal to negative 3. The bottom highlighted yellow is everything greater than or equal to positive 3. And the middle yellow is everything in between 3 and negative 3. That really includes all real numbers again because there's no numbers that are missed. So our domain is all real numbers. Now, your range is how far up and down it goes. Now, notice it goes down here forever but we start here at a height of, it only goes up to a height of 3, and then it goes down forever. So your range starts at a height of 3 and then goes down forever. So we'd say y is less than. Now, at this height of 3, it's not filled in. It's an open circle, so there's no less than or equal to. And then you just put down 3.